privacy is something that a lot of us take for granted. We assume that our conversations are held in confidence, whether they be about our secrets, worries, or even just, hey, wanna play some Lethal League? But in the internet age, there's little that is truly private. Internet service providers have access to all the data that flows through their network. Governments can and do monitor people of interest. Keyloggers and other digital attack methods are an all too prevalent vector of having personal information stolen. Despite all of this, the wider population doesn't seem to be aware of their lack of digital safety. Invasion of privacy is something that feels incredibly vague until you actually experience it and how vulnerable it leaves you feeling. Some forms of media have tried to portray this with varying degrees of success, such as a game I covered a while back called Mainlining. While I enjoyed my time with it, it was a bit of a buggy mess and not really focused enough to get its message across terribly well. Everything felt pretty distant, with much of the gameplay carried out through a command prompt and browsing some basic web pages that make GeoCities look futuristic. It wasn't able to make the whole experience feel very personal or invasive, and I left the game feeling fairly unsatisfied. I wanted something that would really hit me at my core, that would drive home just how invasive information monitoring really is. Sometime not long afterwards, I heard about a game called Orwell Keeping an Eye on You. It seemed to get right some of the problems that I had with mainlining, so I was quite excited to play it. And as always seems to happen with me, it sat in my Steam library for a long time untouched. But I finally got around to checking it out recently, and it's become one of my favorite games I've played in a long while. Orwell takes place through a simulated computer monitor as the player clicks their way around an internet browser and various other tools at their disposal, trying to sniff out information on their current target of interest. Unlike mainlining, however, that's about the extent that the player is able to interact with this world. There is no hacking to really be found here. In fact, the only direct gameplay that Orwell has to offer is dragging and dropping scraps of info on whomever you are investigating to the eponymous Orwell, with the story only advancing after specific information is uploaded to the server. Any information that you can send to Orwell, referred to as a data chunk, is highlighted on your screen, showing at a glance what information you are looking for. Not all of it is necessarily relevant to your investigation, however, and while you are never outright punished for uploading trivial data chunks, your handler does call you out for wasting time. Most direct player engagement with Orwell comes through deciding what information to upload to the server. As you play through the game, you'll come across instances of data chunks that are highlighted in yellow instead of blue, indicating that they are in conflict with other information and that you can only upload one of them to Orwell. These are points in the game where your investigation and the tone of the story changes directly based on your decisions. Events unravel in unexpected ways, and seemingly small decisions have drastic repercussions, forever altering the path of the story. Combined with Orwell's incredibly compelling narrative, this led to me playing through the game start to finish twice, and I might yet go back for more to see how other events pan out. And while the player only has limited interactions with Orwell, I don't really see this as a problem. It's not for everyone, but its incredibly engaging story led me along by the nose, and the gameplay only pulled me out of it a bit on my second time through. The strength of Orwell's story comes from its focus on individual characters amidst the larger narrative of a nation's surveillance of its citizens. Your time as an investigator is spent crawling social media, personal blogs, news reports, and more looking for any relevant information on any persons of interest that you've uncovered. And it doesn't end there. One of the most valuable tools in your arsenal is the listener, which you can utilize to observe direct communication between different characters so long as you have found a username, phone number, email, etc. As such, you find yourself learning a lot about the personal lives of these individuals, their friendships, love lives, medical histories, and neuroses. All of this information brings a disturbing level of closeness to the entire situation. Orwell's writing does a fantastic job of making these characters feel like real people, and that your investigation is an actual breach of privacy. Despite how some of the cast can come off during first impressions, not one really devolves into character tropes or stereotypes. Every single character behaves in ways that would be fairly reasonable given the events of the game, which goes a long way towards selling them as real individuals and making the story of their investigation all the more compelling. Another intriguing aspect of Orwell comes from how you, as investigator, choose to portray the main cast. As I said before, it is your job to find relevant data chunks and upload them to the server, but from there everything is in the hands of your advisor, whose job it is to analyze all of the information that you have sent. They are unable to see any other information you have come across during your investigation, hence the importance of conflicting data chunks. The only thing they have to go off of is what you have shown them. 
This is also incredibly relevant in the tone of the investigation. Due to the nature of the personal websites you visit and conversations you listen in on, you'll find a lot of off-the-cuff remarks that may paint characters in a negative light. Take, for example, a woman joking with her boyfriend that she stole his credit card. Uploading this data chunk to Orwell would simply show your advisor that she admitted to theft, lacking any context on the situation or their relationship. Similarly, you can find several instances of different characters having a strong outburst on social media for various reasons, and uploading this to Orwell might paint someone in a very negative light in the investigation, even if it was a joke or emotional reaction to personal problems. This all combines to form an incredibly compelling experience that is all too relevant in the age of the internet, social media, and oversharing. Many people don't put in the care that they maybe should when putting information on the internet, and Orwell is an experience designed to drive home how assumed privacy is. Knowing that no information on the internet is safe, and actually registering what that means for our own lives, are two entirely different things, and it takes something as compelling as Orwell to show us that on a personal, relatable level. The well-written cast does an excellent job of this through feeling human, to the point where I was left emotionally distressed over the outcomes of my actions, and just trying to do what I could to make everything right. I was left reeling for several days after finishing my first playthrough, and I can't really remember the last time a game impacted me that way. Orwell is a fantastic, relatively short experience that I cannot recommend enough. It's a paragon of storytelling that brings out the humanity in its cast and doesn't pull any punches. And if there's any indie game I've played that I think everyone should experience at some point, Orwell is it. Hey, if you've made it this far, I just want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. It really means a lot. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future. If you'd like to help support me, then be sure to share the video with people and communities that you think might enjoy it. If you'd like to chip in a bit to support me monetarily and be listed with these fantastic people right here, then check out my Patreon. My videos will always be free, but there are some bonus behind the scenes stuff and the like that you can get through supporting me on there. Thanks again for watching.